Hi everybody. Yes, it is still dark out. I just got off work. And uh, it's the last week before before the end of the year. <laughs> we made it. Hey, congratulations. Hope everybody had a great Christmas. I did not. But of course, that's about <laughs> it's about par for the course these days. <laughs> so, you know how I've been fighting with my landlord for a long time. This has caused just an absolute breakdown in a landlord-tenant relationship. Like, it's just absolutely toxic. And I have, she refuses to talk to me except through my legal representative, right? Which puts my legal rep in a really awkward position because she was only supposed to help me for, like, the one court appearance and it keeps getting put off and I can't afford to keep a lawyer on retainer. So, so that's bad to start with. And then to make matters worse, this leaves me with absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to be doing about paying my rent because she's supposed to have resigned and what happens when there's some kind of maintenance problem which we had this weekend so friday night we get really bad weather um snow squalls flash freezing brutal brutal cold winds and my pipes in my kitchen froze and i had no water uh in a snowstorm christmas weekend and it went out saturday morning like friday night saturday morning it's now Wednesday, and as of last night, when I went, when I left for work, still wasn't working. Uh, she, the property manager, was on the property yesterday. Now I don't know if this is if she actually said this or if it's just hearsay or what. I have no proof, but apparently she says, "Oh yeah, that one's still out, but we know why." What the hell? I mean. Anyway, so I'm completely at a loss as to what to do about this, but this just is an absolutely terrible and unprofessional way to treat a tenant. Now, I I shouldn't be saying anything disparaging about them. I shouldn't be talking about my case, but I'm just really frustrated and angry right now. And of course, you know, it's Christmas weekend and it's terrible weather and to do this to tenants whose rent is paid it's just oh anyway so anyway that was how my christmas went i hope yours was a little bit better and uh well let's talk about some happier stuff i was i didn't i don't think i quite finished the christmas evil challenge I had a lot of other stuff on my plate uh, but when I was kind of looking for stuff to read, I put out a call. <laughs> I was like, hey, do, you want to, do any of my friends have, have a, a, you know, a book that I can read? And uh, one of my connections through one of the Facebook groups uh, is an, a writer by the name of Alan Zacher, Z-A-C-H-E-R. Alan, if, uh, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I apologize. But he's written a series of short novels novellas called uh it's being a pi and then the second one is being a pi again and i think there's a third one at least in the series there might be more i'm not sure um and this one is actually set around christmas time so so being a pi centers around this guy named tom Mayer. he's a middle-aged slacker he's 55 he lives with his 80 something year old mother and they like to watch cozy mystery shows together but she's obviously she's aging and her memory isn't what it used to be so he, she forgets that she's already watched these and he solves the mystery before she does and she thinks he you know he could be a pi so it's um it's around christmas time and uh he's it starts out he's reminiscing about his dad who who uh killed someone this is in i mean this is <laughs> this is where we start, right? His dad killed somebody and uh 
and then his dad is now in a retirement home and he and his mother go and you know feed him and visit with him every day um but he has a pretty i mean he's not he doesn't do very much he's not he's unemployed he you know he doesn't have any hobbies he's not married he's just just kind of sitting around and he gets drunk in his room when his mother's not watching kind of thing so his mother convinces the neighbor that he could be a PI. And it turns out that his neighbor, uh, well, it's, it's not like a secret or anything, but his neighbor, uh, her entire family is just in an absolute shambles. So her daughter died. And then I think the husband died. The daughter's husband died. And they had, and... But, sorry, the neighbor's name is Claire. So Claire's granddaughter, Megan, uh, married this guy, John, and they had another daughter. They had a daughter. So the great-granddaughter. Now, Megan disappeared without a trace about five or six years ago. Nobody knows what happened to her. Probably dead. And John was seeing somebody who was pretty rough around the edges, and he ended up breaking up with her. Uh, she was an addict of some kind, and uh, things just were terrible. So he comes home. John came home one day, found his daughter murdered, and they pinned the murder on John. John's now on death row. All of the evidence points to him. But his mother never stopped believing in him. Now Claire is dying of cancer, and she wants to find out what really happened. So this is kind of the mystery that uh, that Tom is left with. And um, <laughs> he's, I think he's more lucky than smart. <laughs> but I think what makes him relatable is that, I mean, he's a middle-aged slob like me. Like he just doesn't really do very much. And I think I like, I think I appreciated that. <laughs> You know, he's not a go-getter. He's not a hero. We, you know, we see all these movies about people that are, you know, they're so heroic and they run right into the face of danger. And <laughs> and this guy is like, no, what are you talking about? This is a guy who has to, you know, fight with the meter maid to stay parked there for more than two hours kind of thing. <laughs> um, so it was, it was a pretty quick read. I think it was only like 150 pages or something. And, um... I saw the ending coming pretty early on, uh, so it wasn't really that complicated a mystery, but it was still pretty enjoyable. Uh, the characters are are interesting characters. Um, the one thing that I did find a, a little bit odd was uh, there's some homophobia in the characters. They're, they're pretty con conservative. And the book was published in 2007 and was contemporary at the time, right? So it takes place in 2007. So you're gay. It doesn't really, like, it's just not as much of a, a an evil motivation or anything like that, that it would have been in the fifties. So I found that a little bit kind of hard to take. Um, but other than that, yeah, I give it I give it a four out of five. It was uh, it was a pretty enjoyable read, and I'll probably visit the character again and read the sequels. The other novella that I read, which I actually just read overnight last night, because this one was pretty quick, was only like 130 pages, and uh, this was A Wind of Knives by Ed Kurtz. Uh, now I've been following Ed on Facebook for some time, uh, and he's he goes off social media every now and again and comes back but he's been he's been more active lately and uh he and his partner they have they have black cats so of course i'm, I'm gonna always follow the cats right <laughs> um so i'll give this one four and a half out of five stars um <sighs> lay and lie still a problem <laughs> oh sorry lost my light uh -oh. there we go so it's about this uh, rancher, and it's it's uh, set in, like, it's a true Western. It's set during the Civil War era. And it's about this guy named Daniel Hayes. Uh, he's a rancher, 
and his ranch is kind of not really doing that well like most most years they just sort of break even and feed themselves they don't really have much to sell but he's pretty content uh, he's got a lead hand named Stephen and at the very beginning this isn't a spoiler because this informs the whole the whole plot but he is in a drunken stupor and he's looking at his his hand who has been who's been hanged and horribly horribly uh mutilated so he goes he pulls himself out of it and abandons his ranch to go and go and seek his revenge and he this is another interesting look again with the homophobia <laughs> um but this in this case the homophobia is I think it's more time appropriate, I think is what I'm trying to kind of get my head around here. Um, and the, obviously the main character is gay or at least bi. Uh, and so he's trying to run up against this society and culture that is just so violently opposed to homosexuality in a time when, yes, you could be lynched for it and it was definitely illegal and but at the same time there's no law that no law that's going to go after the people that lynched his his uh hand who was also his sometime lover which we sort of find out as it goes um so what's interesting about this is that I mean, most stories of revenge, right? You get the roaring rampage of revenge. They go and they kill this person and they chop this person's head off and they, you know, they able, they're able to question this person and beat the hell out of him and they win and they win and they win. But this guy doesn't. This guy goes and the first person that he wants to talk to, <sighs> you know, gets blown away before he can even talk to him. And then, you know, he goes and he's, gravely injured and has to go home so he he never really manages to kind of complete his mission um so ultimately the story isn't really a revenge story it's it's a love story and it's a story about grief and loneliness and how these things can really make a character displaced uh in their whole in their community in their in their um what's what what am i looking for yeah i don't know what i was trying to say there um but i think that's the strength of the book is that it it's got a really uh interesting sense of time and place uh texas in the the real hard wild west um and the just the the sheer loneliness of this expansive open to the elements life that this guy lives um he never quite makes it um but it's it, it's it's a hard life and these are hard characters and it's a different type of look at what we consider you know a stereotypically gay character right because i mean obviously <laughs> the, it there you don't want to write any character that's going to be stereotypical you're, you're going to want to write different kinds of people and this guy just happens to be gay and he's mourning the loss of somebody that that um was dear to him and that uh, just didn't do anything to, to deserve what happened so so anyway i'll give that one uh four and a half out of five stars um yeah i, I quite enjoyed it it was a pretty entertaining passive you know way to pass my evening and um i appreciated uh <laughs> ed's suggestion where he says i don't have that many reviews can somebody <laughs> review it so i thought okay i'll do that uh so happy new year 
Oh no, we're not quite there yet. So I will be back in a few days, definitely before September, or before, before Saturday. I'm really tired. I just got off work. So I'll, I'll be back in a few days to give you my 2022 wrap up. Hope you're reading lots of horror. Hope you're reading other kinds of books. Hope you're staying warm. Have a great day.